Hello, my name is Kishwani. S K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 25. Day 25 of the third edition. Third edition, day 25. We are on page number 232. On page number 232, you will find some exercises, very simple exercises. We're going to go through these exercises very quickly. The same exercises that you see there on page number 232 appeared already in the first and the second edition. If you're interested in watching the same exercises, same problems being done at a little bit of a slower pace, you will find all the original solutions to the exercises from, from, from first edition on day number 75, 76 and 77. Just type in GRE Math, day 75, 76 and then 77. What we did there on those three videos is what we're going to do right now. Let's get going, shall we? And like I said, if it goes a little bit too fast, watch the, watch the original one. So we are at problem number one, exercise A. It says 15 minus 6 minus 4 times negative 2. 6 minus 4, 6 minus 4 is 6 minus 4 is 2, so it's just 2 times negative 2, and we have a negative in front of it. 2 times 2 is 4, and negative this negative and this negative is going to become positive. So it's 15 plus 4 equals 19. I don't want to do this much explanation, I don't know why I cannot stop myself. The next one says 2 minus 17 divided by 5. 2 minus 17 divided by 5. Let's see what we can do. 2 minus 17 is negative 15. Negative 15 divided by 5 is just going to be negative 3. If you divide top and bottom by 5, it's just negative 3. C is Let's do C on the top. C is 60 divided by 12 minus negative 7 and a positive 4. 60, 60 divided by 4, 12 is 5. We do the parenthesis first. Here also we're going to take care of the parenthesis first. Negative 7 and positive 4 is going to give us negative 3. And now we open the parenthesis. Negative and negative is positive. Positive 3, the answer is 8. That was C. Let's do, let's do D. D says 3 raised to 4 minus the negative of 3 raised to 3. How much is 3 raised to 4? 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27. 27 times 3 is 81. That's one way of figuring it out. Another way to, fig to fig figure out what 3 raised to 4 is, is to simply understand that this is the same as 3 squared times 3 squared, which is 9 times 9 is 81. So 3 raised to 4 is 81. You can do it this way or you can simply do it out one, one 3 at a time. 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 3 is 27, and 27 times 3 is 81. So we have 81 here. Minus negative 2 raised to 3 since it's a negative number since it's a negative number being raised to odd power is going to remain negative because negative times negative is positive and positive times negative is going to remain negative so it's negative 8 which boils down to negative and negative is positive 8 is 89 as I said these are too simple they shouldn't require any explanation at all this was D let's move on to E I cannot, I'm reading it and I can't believe what I'm looking at it here. It's just too silly. Oh, I left out something here in my notes. It's a good thing I caught myself. E. Uh, yes, okay. It says negative 5 times a negative 3. And then it goes on to say minus 15. Negative times a negative is negative. This negative times negative is positive. It's going to give us positive. And 3 times 5 is 15. So it's positive 15 and a negative 15. The answer is going to be big fat 0. Do you understand? What is it going to be? Not a regular 0. 
but a big fat one. Let's go to F. F says negative 2 raised to 4 times 15 minus 18 raised to 4. Well, how much is negative 2 raised to 4? First of all, since it's, uh, it's raised to a positive, since it's raised to an even power, negative will become positive because negative times negative is positive, positive times negative will become negative again, and negative times negative is positive. So that's settled. 2 raised to 4, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16. So it's positive 16 times 15 minus negative 18, negative, it's going to be negative 3 raised to 4. And we just found out a little while ago that 3 raised to 4 is 81. And negative raised to an even power is going to remain, it's going to become positive. So it's 16 times 81. Whatever that works out, out to be. You can do it out, do it out if you like. 16 times 81. Times 1 is just going to be 16. Hold the unit digit. 8, 6 is a 48. 8, carry 4. 8, 1 is a 8, plus 4 is 12. 1296 is what I'm getting. I don't know about you, but that's what I have. Let's move on to EFG. Ah, G, in question number G, we have a slight problem. I'm going to raise this thing because I'm going to need room. In G, we have a slight problem. It says 20 divided by 5 squared minus a negative 2 plus a 6 cube is cube. So we, we, I'm going to erase this thing. Use the color here for the dramatic effect. This here, this here is a misprint. They they meant they meant to say times, not negative. They meant to say times. Times. Correct, fix that. It's a misprint in the book. I don't know if your book has that misprint, but mine does. It says negative. That's not what they meant there. They meant to say times. Let's do the problem, shall we? So, 20, min 20 divided by 5 is going to be 4. 4 raised to 2. Times, not, not minus. Times. Times. Negative 2 and a positive 6 is going to give us 4 raised to 3. Okay, stay with me in the story. This is an interesting one. 4 is to 2 times 4 is to 3 is same as 4 is to 5, but 4 can be written as 2 is to 2. 4 can be written as 2 is to 2, raised to 5, which is 2 is to 10. That number has significance. That, ha that number is very significant. It is paramount in the language of computer. In computer programming, 2 is to 10 is a quantity which is known as a kilobyte. Kilobyte, kilo means a thousand, but in the language of computer, in the language of computer, even though ordinarily kilo means a thousand, kilogram is thousand gram, kilometers is thousand meters, kiloliter would be thousand liters, but in the language of computer, a kilo is not made up of one thousand, but it is made up of one thousand and twenty-four. That's what it works out to be. A thousand twenty-four. That's what it works out to be. A thousand twenty-four. Let's do it on the top here so we can see it. The 2 raised to 10 is actually 1024. Oh, we can do it right here. That's the answer, 1024. I'm going to do it here so you can see it. Or, or you can do it yourself. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is six, uh, 16. 16 times 2 is 32. So we are up to 32. 32 times 2 is going to be 64. 64 times 2 is going to be 128. 128 times 2 is going to be 256. 256 times 2 is going to be 500 and 256. Uh, 512 and 512 is half a kilobyte. 512 times 2 is going to be 1024. 
you understand? Half a kilobyte is 512. That was problem number one. Well, that took a long time, didn't it? I didn't expect it to take that long. Let's move on to problem number two, shall we? Let's move on. Problem two. In problem number two, we are simply doing addition and subtraction of four fractions and that's it. Here is the first one. We are told a half minus a third a plus and plus a twelve plus a twelve. Is that it? Did I miss anything? Yep, that's it. Before we can add or subtract any fractions, before we can add or subtract any fractions, the denominator, denominators of all the fractions has to be same. They have to share a common denominator. They have to have same denominator. Denominators are different. 12, 3, and 2. They're different denominators. Let's make, let's make all the denominators the same. Let's make all of them 12. How can we convert the first one into 12? Very simple. Take your first fraction, multiply it top and bottom by 6. My red marker is dying. I shouldn't pick up it. This is a 3. We want a 12. So multiply top and bottom by 4. And this is only 12. So now, now we have a common denominator of 12. They all share the same denominator. Since they all share the same denominator, we can just put it right here. 6 times 1 is 6. Minus 1 times 4 is 4. Plus 1. 6 minus 4 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. So we get 3 over 12. We get... 3 over 12, which is going to reduce to 1 quarter. Divide top and bottom by divide top and bottom by 3 and it reduces to 1 quarter. So the answer to that problem is 1 quarter. Number, so that was A, 2A. Let's look at 2B. Or better yet, let's do the 2B on the top again. 2B. Let's see what 2B says. Well, it's a multiplication problem. It says, let's do it separate. Let's not make it too crowded. Let's, let's do B up here. Two B. It says three quarters plus one seventh times a negative two fifth. This part, this quantity is multiplied. These two quantities, these two quantities, these two quantities are being multiplied. So we don't have to worry about this car, this part. When we are adding or subtracting fractions, these are the two, these are the two fractions that we are adding. That's the multiplication. These two have to have the same denominator. The common denominator is going to be 28 because that's the only thing. They they have no they have no they have no no common factors in there. So the least common multiplier is simply going to be the seven times four. We have a 7 here, 7 times 4 is 28, let's multiply top, top and bottom by 4 of this one, and this guy let's multiply top and bottom by 7, and we are done. My red marker is dying, I should not pick it up, but anyway. So here we get 7 times 3 is 21, and here we get 1 times 4 is 4, and the common denominator is 28, you see? And this is going to stay the way it is. 21 plus 4 is 25, 25 over 28 times a negative 2 over a 5. And if you like, you can put parentheses here also. Let's divide top and bottom by 5, 5 is going to go away, 25 becomes 5. Let's divide top and bottom by 2, 2 is going to go away, becomes 1, but it's a negative 1. Keep that in mind, and 28 is going to become 14. So 5 times 1 is 5, but it's a negative 5, because we have a negative here, negative 5 over 14. Negative 5 over 14 is the answer. And that was B. Let's go to C. Let's go to C. I don't know how long this video is going to end up being. 7, 8. Minus four fifth. 
whole square. Yeah. Whole square. Before, before you worry about squaring the whole thing, you have to first subtract these two fractions from each other. We cannot subtract them right now the way they are because they do not share a common denominator. They don't have the same denominator. The denominators have to be the same. This one has a denominator of 8, this one has a denominator of 5. We have to make them same. Again, the least common multiplier, the least common multiplier, the LCM, the smallest number, the smallest number that we can find, which happens to be a multiple of both 8 and 5, is 40. How do we convert 8 into a 40? Very simple. Multiply top and bottom by 5. Since we're multiplying, since we're multiplying top and bottom, since we're multiplying this fraction by 5 over 5, since we're multiplying this fraction by 5 over 5, we're not changing its value because 5 over 5 is just 1. And we're going to take this fraction and multiply top and bottom by 8. There we go. We have 8 times 5, 8 times 5, they, they, share, they share the same denominator now. Now we can do what we have to do. We'll, we'll worry about squaring it at the end. So we have 7 5 to 35 minus 8 4 to 32 over 40 and now we squared it. 35, 35 minus 32 is 3 over 40 squared. 3 squared is 9 and 40 squared. How much is 40 squared? 4 squared is 16. 4 times 4 is 16 and then we're going to have that with two zeros. 9, 9, 1600 is the answer. What number was this? Oh, we still have one more to go. D. That's the choice D. 2D. We have 3 over negative 8 divided by 27 over 32. Is that right? Yep, and we know when we have to divide one fraction by another fraction, the second fraction, we convert this division sign into multiplication sign, and we multiply the first fraction by the reciprocal of, this, of the second fraction. And this is what I'm talking about. If you need all of that explanation, if you need all of that explanation, if you need to understand why we do that, then watch the original videos, because this is where I explain to you why we actually multiply by the reciprocal of the second fraction. If you need that explanation, Watch 75, 76, and 77. Here I'm not going to explain things. I'm just going to do it. So it's going to be 3 over negative 8 times, division becomes multiplication, times reciprocal of it. So 20, 27 over 32 is going to become 32 over 27. Let's divide top and bottom by 3. 3 is going to go away and 27 becomes 9. When I say go away, it just becomes 1. You understand? Let's divide top and bottom by 8. 8 is going to go away and 32 is going to become 4. So we end up 1 times 4 is 4. And here, don't forget we have a negative sign, so it's going to be negative. Whatever the answer is going to be negative. 4, and on the top, on the bottom we have 9. There you go. There is nothing here. It's just 1. one. So negative 4, negative 4 9 is the answer. Negative 4 9 is the answer. Now listen, even though the video is getting to be very long, but since I had already planned to do question number 1, 2, and 3 in this video, I told you already 75, 76, 77, I'm going to continue it, and we're going to do problem number 3 also. Problem number three says, which of the following integers which of the following integers are divisible by eight? And the integers that are given to us are three hundred and twelve. 98, 312, 98, 144, 144. Now, there are a couple of ways we can go about it. One is a very classical way, which is to actually divide each one of them by 8 and see which one is divisible, obviously. Another, another, another way is to understand that if something is divisible by 8, 8 is, simply, 8 is simply 2 times 2 times 2. So if you keep dividing the, this, uh, these numbers by 2 each time, 
anything that goes the, anything that makes through three rounds of twos is divisible by eight because two times two is four four times two is eight and they are all even numbers which means they will all be divided by they are all divisible by two everybody qualifies for the first round three now at the end of three round whoever is left over in the ring is going to be the winner do you understand somebody's going to get knocked out let's do the first round okay let's get going how many twos does three have three has three has only one two after we take away two from the one the remaining one goes and joins this one becomes 11 11 has five twos five twos are ten after we take away ten from the eleven one goes and joins two and becomes a twelve and twelve has twelve has six twos one now if you didn't understand any of this thing and if you need to do it out you have to do it out there is no choice but don't use the calculator if you cannot do it if you cannot uh, if you cannot uh, manage this divi uh, division orally if you're not capable of it then do it out what I did was this 312 divided by 2 how many twos does 3 have? 3 has 1 2 after we take away 2 from the 3 we have a remainder of 1 1 goes and joins the other one becomes 11 11 has 5 twos after we take 5 twos are 10 after we take away 10 from the 11 we have a remainder of 1 1 goes and joins the 2 becomes 12 12 has 6 twos that's what we did here let's do the same thing here I'm just doing it orally. Do you understand? How many twos does nine have? Nine, nine has four twos. Four twos are eight. After we take away eight from the nine, we have a remainder of one. What happens to that one? One goes and joins the eight and becomes eighteen. Eighteen has nine twos. Oh, there you go. Forty-nine is not an even number. It's not going to make it through the second round. It made it through the first round. It was divisible by two. It's not going to make it through the second round. Ninety-eight is not divisible by eight. Ninety-eight is not divisible by eight. There you go. We already knocked out one in the second round. How many twos does 11 have? 11 has 5 twos. 5 twos are, five twos are 10. After we take away 10 from the 11, we have a remainder of 1. What happens to that 1? 1 goes and joins the 2, becomes a 12, and 12 has 6 twos. There we go. How many twos does 7 have? 7 has, seven, 14 has 7 twos. And 4 has 2 twos. There we go. So everybody made it through the first round except this guy. Let's do one more round. Let's do one more round. How many twos does 15 have? 15 has 7 twos. 7 twos are 14. After we take away 14 from the 15, we have a remainder of 1. What happens to that 1? 1 goes and joins the 6 and becomes a 16. And 16 has 8 twos. So that one works. How many twos does 5 have? 5 has 2 twos. 2 twos are 4. After we take away 4 from the 5, we have a remainder of 1. What happens to that 1? 1 goes and joins the 6 and becomes a 16. And 16 has 8 twos. How many twos does three, 7 have? 7 has 3 twos. 3 twos are 6. After we take away 6 from the 7, we have a remainder of 1. What happens to that 1? 1 goes and joins the 2, it becomes 12. And 12 has 6 twos. Voila! Everybody made it through the second round. Now we have to do one more round. We have to do one more round, but we don't have to do one more round. We are done. We are done. Why? Because they are all even number. This is an even number, this is an even number, this is an even number. Which means they will make it through one round. What they... what? They are, they are all divisible by 3. They are, they are all divisible by 2. So we don't have to do it out actually. Just simply understand that they are all divisible by 2, which means they will all make it through the third round. So we are done. The question was, which one of these integers was divisible by 8? The answer is 312 is divisible by 8, 112 is divisible by 8, and 144 is divisible by 8. 98 is not. 98 is not. So that was one way of doing it. On the way to do this thing is to actually do it out. Divide these numbers by 8. It is not that difficult. It is not that difficult to divide these numbers by 8. It is very simple. You just have to practice. You will never, you will never, get, never get a hang of it unless you practice. How many, eight, how many 8 does 3 have? 3 has no 8s. 3 has no 8s. 3 is too puny to have any 8s. What does the 3 do? It goes and joins the 1. It joins the neighbor. Becomes the 31. Ah, 31 has 31 has 3 eights. 3 eights at 24. This is where you have to pay attention. Listen carefully and pay attention. 3 eights at 24. After we take away 24 from 31, we have a remainder of 7. What happens to 7? The 7 goes and joins the 2 and becomes a 72. How many 8 does 72 have? We know 8 eights are 64. I know 8 squared. 8 squared is 64. 72 is one more 8 than 64. So 64 has 8 for 8 8. 72 must have 9 8. There we go. It is divisible by 8. Answer is 39. 312 divided by 39 divided by 8 is 39. We did not finish the process here, but had we finished it, had we done one more round, we would have found out that this is 39. Let's do it out. How many threes does 7 have? 7 has 3 twos. 3 twos are 6. After we take away 6 from the 7, we have a remainder of 1. What happens to that 1? 1 goes and joins the 8 and becomes an 18. Aha! 18 has 9 twos. Follow, you see? It's not that difficult. 
we already established that 98 is not divisible by it's 98 is not evenly divisible by 8. We're going to show it right now. 98 is not going to be evenly divisible by 8. How many 8 does 9 have? 9 has 1 8. After we take away 8 from the 9, we have a remainder of 1. What happens to that 1? 1 goes and joins the 8 and becomes 18. And 18 has how many? How many 8? 18 has 2 8s. 2 8s are 16. After we take away 16 from the after we take away 16 from the 18, we will have a remainder of 2. And the 2 must be divided by 8. 98 divided by 8 is going to be 12 and a quarter. 12 and a fourth. 12 and a quarter, that's right. 12. Do you understand? That's what 98 divided by 8 is going to give you 12 and a quarter. It is not evenly divisible. Well. This number, when we divide by 8, is going to be 14. Because we know if we were, had we continued one more round, 28 divided by 2 would have been 14. Let's show it to. Let's show us. Let's show here that 112 divided by 8 is indeed 14. How many 8 does 11 have? 11 has 1 8. After we take away 8 from the 11, we have a remainder of 3. What happens to the 3? 3 goes and joins the 2 and becomes a 32. And 32 has 4 8s. There we go. You see, had we done one more round, it would have been 14. This guy divided by 2 is 18. We will see that when we divide 144 by 8, it's going to be 18. It's going to be 18. Let's do it. Or can we squeeze it? Let's do it right here. We're going to divide 144 by 8. But we're not going to show it like this. We're going to just do it orally. How many 8 does 14 have? 14 has 1 8. After we take away 8 from the 14, we have a remainder of 6. What happens to that 6? That 6 goes and joins the 4 and becomes a 64. And 64 we know has 8 4s. Voila. You see? And we continue one more round. 3 has 1 2. One, remaining 1 goes and joins the 6 and becomes a 16. And 16 has 8 2. Voila. 18. So it turns out out of the, out of the 4 quantities that they give us, 3 of them were divisible by 8. Everything except 98. Three of them were divisible by eight, one was not. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? I know.